Grace and peace be with you from our God and Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Saul of Tarsus, or you might know me better as Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Some of you may know me from your Bible. About a third of the New Testament are stories of me and my ministry, or are the letters that I wrote to encourage others. And in this way, much of, of our theology, of our thinking about being a Christian was formed by my writings. Many of them were letters of the, the 13, well, some of the letters were written by me directly and some by my followers, uh, but 13 of them, nine of them are churches that I planted or, or helped to plant brand new communities of Christians. And then four of those letters are those that I wrote to encourage individual Christians. And in planting those churches and traveling around uh, telling people about Jesus, uh, we didn't have such measuring devices uh, back in, in my day, uh, but uh, scholars have estimated that I traveled between 10 and 15,000 miles telling people about our Lord Jesus Christ. Traveling most often by foot, sometimes by horse, and many times by boat as well. And in my many travels, and you will read of this in my letters, I developed many wonderful friendships, many partnerships with, with people and encouraged them, and they went on to change the world, telling people about Jesus. But I didn't come this morning to tell you about, about my accomplishments this morning, but I wanted to share with you instead how my journey began. Sometimes it's helpful to go back to the beginning and think about how you became a person of faith, how you came to know of Jesus, how you came to serve him. I'm sure each of you has your own story, and I wanted to share mine with you. Unfortunately, my story does not begin positively. I was raised as a passionate and well-educated Jew. And so I hated, hated Christians, followers of Jesus. I felt that they were perverting the one true Jewish faith. I did everything I could to hurt and harm and imprisoners, followers of the way, followers of Jesus. I remember one time in particular, a passionate Christian named Stephen was, was speaking to us religious leaders, and he was Jewish as well. He knew all of the, the Jewish story. But then as, and, and when he spoke, he, he spoke like, like an angel. The, the countenance on his face, it was glorious. But then as he ended his description, he described how now with Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit, God could be worshiped anywhere, not just in the temple, which of course is blasphemy. And the anger rose up in me. And I think about this even today, the contrast of the look on his face, the angelic look, and yet the blasphemy that I thought he was speaking. And the anger rose up so much amongst the leaders that many took up rocks and stoned Stephen. And although I did not throw a rock myself, I stood guard over their cloaks while they did. I did not believe that Jesus was the chosen one, the Messiah. I did not believe that he could be risen from the dead. 
And so my passion to exterminate these Christians grew, and I asked for permission to travel to Damascus in order to punish Christians who were there as well. And it was on that journey, it was on that Damascus road that my life changed. I was not far from Damascus, and this incredible bright light shone around me, a light clearly from heaven, and it knocked me to the ground, and a voice said to me, why are you persecuting me? Well, I did not know who this voice was or how I could be persecuting him, and so I, I asked, who is this? And he told me that he was Jesus. I had never thought about this, but I realized that when I was persecuting any child of God, and especially a follower of Jesus, I was persecuting Jesus himself. This is worth wrestling with for all of us. That whenever we are cruel, whenever we are unkind, whenever we hurt anyone, especially a follower of Jesus, we're not just harming them, we're persecuting Jesus himself. Then Jesus went on to say, and I should note that now when when I, when I think about the persecuting I did of Christians, I persecuted the followers of the best way, the author of life, the source of God's love and grace. These are the ones I was persecuting. And when Jesus said that to me, that I was persecuting them, he said, it is Jesus whom you are persecuting. I think your Bible translation does not accurately uh, reflect what it is that Jesus actually said to me. Your translation is not as deep as it could be. What Jesus literally said to me is, you are kicking the goad. Now, perhaps your translation does not describe that because you probably wouldn't know what that means, but let me, let me explain this to you. So kicking the goad means this. When someone has a beast of burden, for example, an oxen, they will carry uh, a goad with them. It's a stick, a staff with a sharp metal point. And you use this to guide the beast of burden, left or right, or if the animal is not traveling fast enough, you humanely, but encourage them along. But some animals are so stubborn that they kick against the goad, they kick back on the prod, and in fact hurt themselves even more in the process. Jesus said to me that I was kicking the goad, that I was fighting back in the very direction and the very guidance and in fact the very love and grace that I needed. I was fighting back against Jesus. And perhaps you can relate th to this as well. Perhaps you sometimes have fought against what Jesus has for you as well. He has such guidance and direction for us, but sometimes we fight back against it. We kick against his goad. And think about this. For all of the, the times when, when we resist, when all of the times when, when his guidance and his direction is the best course of action for us, shouldn't we follow along with this? There are times, of course, when, when we lie or we cheat 
or we are cruel to others, or we steal, or even worse things. And he wants the very best for us. And yet we fight against him. He is the source of all grace and all love. We always want to take his guidance. It was that day that I stopped fighting against his direction, stopped kicking the goad, and in fact let myself be led by him. It was then that I experienced Jesus' grace. Well, first I should tell you that from that moment on, I was struck blind. I, I, I think not only blind physically, but I realized how blind I had been spiritually. Those who were with me, who heard the voice as well, and were just as amazed as I was, led me into Damascus. And there for three days I neither ate nor drank and simply waited for what Jesus had for me next. And it was then that I experienced Jesus' grace through a man named Ananias. So often we do experience grace through the physical presence of someone else. Ananias, I found out, had been called by Jesus to go to me. Now, Ananias had absolutely no reason to trust me. In fact, Ananias had every reason to hate me for my actions against Christians. And Ananias said this to Jesus. But Jesus told him, I have a plan for this Saul. Later I was to change my name to Paul to indicate the changes that God had made in my life. And so Ananias came to me. Ananias, as I said, who had every reason to hate me, called me brother. And he laid his hands on me. He was a conduit of God's healing and God's grace. For immediately laying his hands upon me, I could see. And then I ate and drank. And in fact, I had the opportunity then, as Ananias did, to be a conduit of God's grace and love. So many of the people that I met in my travels had never met Jesus in person. And of course, I hadn't met him in his earthly form either. But they came to know Jesus through me. As Ananias was also the conduit of Jesus. And we as well have the opportunity, you have the opportunity to be a conduit of Jesus' grace as Ananias was to me. It was that day that not only my thinking and my faith changed, but my actions changed. All of those things I told you about before, the letters and the travel and the encouragement of many Christians, it was not enough for me just to believe in Jesus, but I had to tell others. I had to share in the way I lived my life with others. And each and every one of us has that same opportunity to be a conduit as Ananias was to me and I was to others. We can be for a world desperately in need of Jesus. I hope that you will go and live a life serving Jesus as I have as well. And again, grace and peace be with you. Amen.